you know, normally I have some sort of like little anecdote or something to start the videos with, but I'm fresh out of that today. My brain power is drained, quite frankly. So instead, we're just going to jump right into the video, which as you can tell by the title is you guys give me a specific trope that you're looking for and I give you a rec for it. So this is part two. I had asked for these back on my Instagram story like weeks ago now, and you guys submitted a whole bunch, which actually I thought I was only going to have to make two parts. I think I am in fact going to have to make three parts of this video. So if you have any other specific niche tropes that you are looking for, you can be like as specific as possible like it doesn't just need to be like mafia like in the last one that I did someone wanted uh dad's best friend and mafia so it's like I will do my best to find as specific as you get this is gonna have to in fact be three parts because there's no way that I can get through all of these unless if this video once again turns out to be insanely long I think I have 11 of your tropes that you gave me and I think maybe I have like 12 wrecks then or 13 wrecks because a couple of them I got twice Anyways, let's not ramble anymore. Let's just go ahead and jump in. Which first up, I got Stepdad. One of you guys wanted a Stepdad book, which listen, I've actually read quite a few Stepfather ones, but I feel like one that I have not talked about in a long time on this channel is Brutal Intentions by Lilith Vincent. Unhinged Stepdad may have you. May have you, did that make any sense? I don't think so. Anyways, uh, this one is also Mafia age gap on top of being stepdad. So basically our hero in this one, he is in the mafia. He is what you could say is a bit of a playboy that's putting it nicely. Uh, and his family is kind of like, yeah, no, we need to like curb that. Like you can't just keep running around town and getting with anything that walks. So like you need to kind of calm it down. So they're kind of like, you know what you're going to do? You're going to marry this one woman to kind of help tame you a little bit because also like you can't be doing that with the family business. And so he agrees. However, he agrees because he meets his soon to be wife and immediately wants her daughter. Our heroine in this one, she is 18. She does not have a good relationship with her mom. She kind of can't wait to get away. And when her stepdad shows up, she right away kind of locks eyes with him and she can tell that he wants her, but she really wants nothing to do with him because she wants nothing to do with anything to do in her family. She's very much the outcast and he pretty much doesn't leave her alone once he shows up. Uh, yeah, it's toxic. It's dark. It's messed up. Check your triggers. Lilith Vincent's books are always fun and wild. I don't really have much else to say about this. If you're looking for a fun stepdad time, then this is the one for you. So this next one here, so I I think this fits. I think it kind of fits the vibes. I don't know if it fits it perfectly, but I think if you're looking for this kind of energy, I think you're going to get it. So I got Reincarnation, and kind of the only book that I could really think of is Was I Ever Here by Naomi Loud. So I'm not really going to get too much into how this kind of fits, um, because obviously I think that would be like giving things away. Basically with this one, our hero, he, five years ago, he had uh, an accident where he died. He died, but then he did not die. Uh, he came back and he basically has now had this like inexplicable urge to like be finding someone. Like he's just felt like he, it's like a mission for him to find this one person, but he doesn't know who they are, doesn't know where they are. It's just kind of something that he feels inside of himself. And then when he finally locks eyes with our heroine, Sunny, he realizes that she has been the one that he has been looking for this whole time. However, when she locks eyes with him, it's because he was literally sent to kill her boss and she's terrified of him. So now he's kind of like, mm, damage control, time for some damage control because he obviously doesn't want to leave Sunny behind. And Sunny, she has she's just kind of like down bad on herself right now she doesn't really have a lot going for her and when our hero shows up she's kind of like oh you're terrifying because you literally came to like threaten my boss with a gun and like that's kind of scary to me and like you're kind of scary and I don't really know what to think about you and especially now that you're kind of like stalking me kind of following me around doesn't really know what to think about him anyway story ends up going from there I won't really say anything more about how I kind of feel like it fits with the vibe of this I don't want to accidentally spoil anything, but I love this book. Love this book by Naomi Loud. Next up, Touch Her and Die. One of my favorite tropes. I honestly have so many that I could have picked for this, but I am going to throw it in there. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I'm going to throw it in there for the fanfic girls, and that is Secrets and Masks by Emerald Slytherin, because this Draco is so touch her and I'll kill you vibes for Jermione, or for Jermione, for Hermione. It's insane. So yes, this is a Jermione fan fiction, and it is like during the war. I mean, like, I don't know how, like, 
how in line of, with events it is, is is an actual Harry Potter because my actual Harry Potter knowledge is very limited. I pretty much only know like Germany fan fiction world. Basically in this one, Hermione is like the order's greatest weapon. And in order to kind of help take down the order, Draco ends up kidnapping Hermione on and bringing her over to their side of the war, like Voldemort's side, where he is, is he the death mask in this one? He has like a couple of different names in different one so I can't remember because I think he, it's High Reeve and Manacle I think in this one it's Death Mask right and he rides a dragon shut up shut up Draco on a dragon this is everything and anyway so he ends up bringing her onto his side and using like you know some mind powers basically like turn her into a weapon against the order and having her captive and of course she does not want to be there she doesn't want anything to do with any of them and he's also at the same time trying to like break into her mind to unlock some order secrets uh but obviously as with things are with how much they hate each other that line between love and hate is very thin and like sh they both kind of realize that maybe they are in fact not the enemies that they think that they are. Oh, one of my favorite Germany fan fictions of all time. And let me tell you, this Draco is so over the top protective of her. Like, yeah, obviously he does some messed up things to her, but truly the lengths that he is willing to go to in order to protect her. Oh, it's amazing. Touch her. You, you even think about doing something. You even look sideways at her in this one. Draco's killing you straight up. And he's killing you with his dragon, which is even better. So yeah, I know, I know fan fiction isn't everyone's thing, but I had to include this one, especially because I feel like touch her and I touch her and die is like such a common trope in romance books nowadays that I feel like I talk about a lot of books that have that in there that I don't really get to talk about like fan fiction a lot. So secrets and masks for you. Next up, taboo slash forbidden why choose. So I picked Hearts of Fortune by Ewen because this is a stepbrother and force proximity why choose. Obviously, they should not all be together because of the step family connections. Basically, our heroine, her mother, she ends up marrying this very rich, wealthy, older man. And when they arrive to move into his new house, or basically at the wedding, she shows up and then she ends up meeting her three new stepbrothers who are all kind of these like spoiled, rich guys but they're they they have a backstory okay they're not just like you know of course they have to have broody backstories one of them is like 20 something he's out of college he's already like a banker got himself established and then the other two both go to the same university that now our heroine is going to be attending so they're all at college together uh but they all still live at home in the family mansion because that's kind of how it works there and it's kind of like high society vibes and again like there's our heroine is kind of like running from her past that then like she hasn't really like told any of them about doesn't hasn't really even told her mom about because they don't have a great relationship and just immediately once she shows up all three of the guys are like i mean the older one of course is kind of like i don't like you and like stay away but of course he's also like secretly obsessed with her and yeah it ends up being her romance with all three of them uh i don't really know what else to say about it it's a fun time uh obviously yeah they have to hide it from everyone because not only can their parents not find out but also like society in general cannot find out about them all being together and yeah that is basically that next up emotional something that hits like where the mountains meet the sea okay so i don't i don't think i've read anything that hits like where the mountains meet the sea except like maybe no mm, no Forbidden by Tabitha Zazuma is probably the only one that is like extremely taboo and I'm not going to like do that one here because also that's like not necessarily the same thing. So even though I will not say anything about Where the Mountains Meet the Sea, like how that book ends, I will say that this one ends differently. So if you didn't like how Where the Mountains Meet the Sea ended, then maybe you would like how this one ends. Uh, but yeah, obviously I don't want to get into that spoiler territory. And I can't really say too much about this book either without giving things away, so I'll give a very brief overview. But if you want truly like an emotional gut punch, Where Ashes Fall by Marnie Mann, oh, this one's, this one's gonna hurt. I read this on vacation last year. I read it out by the pool with my friends and they literally recorded me crying next to the pool because they thought it was funny and I was like, this is not funny. Anyways, so this one follows Alex, who's our heroine, and Basically, she's living in the city, she's living her life, and she is in love with two men. But if you think that this is like a cheating type story or like a traditional like love triangle type story, you are wrong. Uh, it's Smith and Dylan. They're both opposites, but both, they're not like total opposites. Smith, I think, is a pilot and, you know, I don't know, like more casual type vibes. And then Dylan, I'm pretty sure, is a businessman and more kind of like that kind of like high powered type vibes. I guess read, read the back of the book, I guess. But the bottom thing is, if you think the story is about a cheater, you couldn't be more wrong. And that's what I will just say. 
Um, I absolutely loved it if you want something really emotional and I do highly recommend really don't look anything up about this one Please just go in blind. I mean, obviously if you have triggers definitely look up trigger warning Ooh, Even just thinking about it. Oh, it like it hurts. Uh, next up single dad So I actually don't have a ton of single dad books as you guys know I don't really read a lot of single dads single parents because I'm not really a kid person However, there is one single dad that I love over a lot of the other dads, which also, yeah, I'm not doing like Emerson from Praise, cause even though, yeah, he's a single dad, technically his son is like a full blown adult. This one is like single dad and she ends up being his nanny. Heartless by Elsie Silver, yes. I feel like almost everyone has read this book, but if you, and the chance that you haven't yet and you have similar taste to me and normally you look at this book and are like, I'm definitely not picking that up because it's small town and he's a cowboy. Listen to, listen to me, okay? I'm talking to the other me's out there who hate those things but I loved this book. This book was truly so good. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. This one follows Cade and Willa and they basically have a bit of a bump in together at a coffee shop where he's kind of like, she just seems like a little bit of a hot mess kind of whatever. He's this grumpy single dad who works on his farm, raises his son and just kind of like, doesn't really have anything else going for him outside of that. He's just kind of like all work, no play kind of man, okay? And Willa, she's just full of life and she's kind of ready for a bit of a fresh start. I think she recently like quit her job or something and she's looking for something new. So her best friend, who is the heroine in the first book, who then is married to Cade's brother, or like dating, I think at that point, Cade's brother, uh, she's like, hey, why don't you come out and visit me? And when she does, then she ends up meeting Cade and she ends up securing the job as being the nanny for his son. And let me tell you the thing about the kid in this book that I actually like. First of all, the kid doesn't talk like an adult because that drives me crazy. I hate when kids are giving like sage advice to adults in books and I'm like that's just unrealistic okay like my four-year-old nephew like he just talks about like poop half the time okay like he's not dropping like kernels of wisdom on me okay so I hate it when they do that and he does not do that and also I will say like the whole cowboy aspect in this I don't know what to say is other than it just works it's obviously like small town but it doesn't feel like that like suffocating small town vibe it's very fun I loved Willa I loved Willa and Kate's connection whatever I don't need to keep going on in this it's great love it read it and like I said I'm talking to the other me's out there who don't normally like those things give it a try I talk too freaking long okay next up we got brother's best friend and forbidden which this one fits perfectly in that. And that is The Truth About Heartbreak by B. Celeste. I busted out my beautiful Dark and Disturbed version of this book because I feel like I never get to show this one off. Anyways, okay, so our heroine in this one, she was adopted by this one family when she was younger. I think though like around a teenager age out of foster care, she had a pretty rough life in the beginning of her life until she is adopted and taken in. And then she has this new older brother who then has this best friend Everett. So it is her older brother's best friend. And when she first kind of comes into the family, her and Everett kind of immediately have a bit of like an understanding between each other. And even at this like younger age they both can see that they both have like gone through it and are kind of like a bit of a comfort to each other a little bit but obviously nothing happens then basically I actually think in the prologue of this book it starts out with them both as adults and she wakes up next to him realizing that they had hooked up with each other when then it is acknowledged that she's like oh no how could I do this because he has a girlfriend and yeah it's a messy romance there is cheating in this one which is why i'm putting it on forbidden because yeah there is some cheating going on in this so obviously if that is a trigger for you then definitely i would avoid this one but you know they do end up cheating to be together which me personally i like the messiness and the sneaking around that then like ensues because of that obviously in fiction and just to genuinely these two just kind of like understand each other on a different level than anyone could ever understand them and yeah I don't really want to say anything more because I don't want to accidentally spoil anything but also yeah Oliver is not going to be too happy that his best friend got with his little sister especially when he knows that his best friend has a girlfriend. Uh, next up MCRH so Motorcycle Club Reverse Harem or Why Choose. So we got Distrust by Gian Wright. I've talked about this book quite a bit this year because I have really really enjoyed this series. I've read the first two books. I think there are four total in the series. They all end on cliffhangers and I definitely will end up finishing at one point but this one our heroine. She was kind of raised by another family member because her dad is the head of the Hollowed Crows MC and he didn't really want her to be around the motorcycle club business. However when she's a teenager she can't help but stay away and she ends up sneaking onto the compound and there she meets our three heroes and they kind of all strike up a bit of a friendship even though her dad is like I don't really want you around this life whatever but she ends up doing it anyways and then on her 18th birthday she's finally like hey listen you guys 
I've actually been into you. Let's ruin this friendship a little bit. And the guys are kind of like, yeah, your dad will kill us if we like cross that line, but also like, why not? And they end up spending the night together. However, she wakes up the next morning and they're gone and they wake up the next morning and she's gone. And yeah, basically everything kind of falls apart. And then when she comes back uh, and her dad has passed and now her three best friends are actually not her best friends anymore. And they really want nothing to do with her. And now they're the head of the MC. And even though that's her home and that's where she wants to be, they want nothing to do with her. She wants nothing to do with them and it ends up being her romance with the three of them and also I think if I'm remembering correctly I think two of the guys are also involved anyways it's it's messy it's fun it's toxic there's a lot of built-up hurt and years of like distrust that is built between the four of them uh I love it so we got second chance so I got second chance and then second chance with groveling so first up I'm just gonna do more of a general second chance one and that is the words by Ashley Jade oh one of my favorite books of all time this is a rock star romance and it is second chance following Lennon and Phoenix so they both went to high school together and Lennon ended up being Phoenix tutor and they got to know each other had a little bit of a relationship something happened they broke up Phoenix ends up becoming this very successful musician years down the line he is completely spiraling and his team kind of doesn't know what to do with him at this point so they end up needing to find like a sober companion for him however he basically seduces all of the sober companions so it's not really working well so they decide to find Lennon because they're like she will not be charmed by him whatsoever because she completely hates him for what happened in the past and his betrayal and basically yeah she ends up agreeing to come on the road and be his sober companion because she needs the money and it ends up being their second chance oh my gosh though and I mean there is groveling in this but yeah Phoenix is mean Phoenix is mean at times he's just a sad broody rock star boy I love him I love Lennon she's an incredibly strong character like even when Phoenix is mean like she does not let him push her around by any means I absolutely love this one the second chance is beautiful it's obviously a thick book you go through it with these characters and like it gets flipped from like him getting to be the sad one to her getting to be the sad one it's beautifully done absolutely love it you got to check it out and second chance with groveling uh, so here's the thing. I haven't read like that many second chance books and honestly, I mean the groveling in this one is pretty good I will say there's actually like I wanted to talk about forget me not by QB Tyler because I think that has some of the best groveling in it However, that's more marriage and trouble than second chance. So like I didn't include that So instead even though like if you want great groveling forget me not by QB Tyler But this one does have pretty good groveling in it still and that is when the stars fall by Emery Rose So this one it's actually kind of told in three parts. It's like that them as kids growing up and like through high school together their high school sweethearts their childhood best friends and it kind of morphs into more and then our hero ends up going off to war in this third in the second part and like that's where their relationship kind of starts to like get a little rocky and then in the third part is after things that happened and the second one and the third one is kind of the time for groveling which I can't really say much about that because I don't want to give anything about that away I will just say that the second part of this book actually was my favorite because it was so emotionally driven it was so hard to see see these two characters who had such great love for each other kind of start to fall apart oh but like I kind of loved that and then you see the groveling and them coming back together in the third part oh it was so good very emotional very emotionally driven I will say it does start out slower too because you do see them from like childhood into high school and whatever so like that beginning part for me because normally I don't love that but I will say that at least with that, uh, it does build such a foundation of the two of them and how, and like, you truly need that time with them to see how they once were to then the people that they become over the course of the story. Really beautiful. Check your triggers on it. But yeah, if you want a good second chance with some groveling in there, this is a good one then. Oh, I completely skipped over because I was like, wait, I have this book sitting here. I skipped over it. So actually I have two more prompts. Uh, so this one was age gap plus stalker slash captive. So that was actually kind of tricky because I was like, okay, so I've read some Captor Captor, but I feel like they haven't really had that much of an age gap. Um, and then like Stalker, same thing. However, that's a glove. I believe there's like a 10 year age difference between Arrow and Briony. So we're going to go with this one because yeah, he is a stalker and there's a bit of an age gap. So Arrow and Briony, 
dark romance check your triggers on this one but literally my favorite book by jesse hall one of my top books that i read last year absolutely loved this one brini is was born and raised in this cult and she is still at the beginning of this book very much in this cult she is still drinking the kool-aid in it and she is a woman in this cult and she is getting ready to ascend to a leadership position and she's kind of like yeah she's feeling good she's like i'm gonna make a difference i'm doing this thing however she starts getting these notes then from this mysterious stalker uh kind of trying to warn her try to like break that spell that she's kind of under because even though she is about to get to this leadership position in this cult that she thinks is her entire life they do not really want her to be empowered. They don't really want a woman in power. They don't really want her being in power. And basically the stalker is trying to kind of like warn her being like, you're not safe. And that is Arrow. And I will say, this is not like a slow burn kind of stalker build like Haunting Adeline is. Arrow is a very up in your face kind of stalker. He's up in Brienne's business pretty much from right off the bat. Uh, and I will not say anything about Arrow's backstory because again, I don't want to accidentally give things away. This book truly is so good. Brienne turns into such a strong heroine in the way that Arrow pushes her because he knows that she is capable of so much and how he's willing to be there by her side for it. Mm, I love it. One of my favorite dark romances of all time. Last but not least, student teacher. I got twice. Only twice. I was kind of surprised because that is normally something that you guys are always asking me for because you guys know that that is one of my all-time favorite tropes. I do have two that I feel like I haven't talked about recently, so I want to go ahead, wanted to go ahead and do these two instead. So lear lessons learned by Layla Simon. So this one, our heroine ends up going to this kind of like private boarding school, but I think it's like a university. And before classes start, she is out for a night and she's out having fun. She kind of runs into this one guy, but you know, nothing really happens. And then she goes to the bar, gets a drink, and then her drink is spiked. And this bartender basically, you know, does that to these women around this university. However, our hero, who's the guy that she kind of had a bit of an interaction with earlier, ends up noticing this and he kind of swoops in and saves her and then takes her back to his place that night to kind of look after her. And then it's only after that that then they realize that they are in fact a student teacher and that obviously they cannot be together. He doesn't want to be there. He does not want to be a teacher at all. He actually has some ulterior motives for needing to be at this school, which I will not get into, but it's not like, I'd say it's like traditional student teacher where he like this is like his life's passion being a teacher um definitely dark a little unhinged kind of goes off the rails a little bit but like in a really really fun and kind of un unexpected way uh and then the second student teacher book i want to talk about is the wicked by rosie alice which this one switches it up a little bit with student teacher because she is actually the teacher and he is her student so our heroine she basically moves back home after being gone for for years like she went off to school and whatever but she's in her early 20s and she kind of has like gotten away. However, something like something going on in her family has brought her back to her hometown. And pretty much the only job she can end up getting is a job at the high school as a teacher. And one night she's out at a club cause she, she's not doing good. Like she's not happy. She's not, she's kind of like aimless. She kind of doesn't really know what to do with her life now that she's back in her hometown that she never really expected to be in. And in this position so early on in life with her family. And she goes out to a club one night and she ends up meeting a guy out there. They hit it off. They end up doing drugs together like it's a very toxic romance between the two of them and then when she shows up to school on her first day of teaching she realizes that the guy from the club that then she kind of had a bit of like a weekend with uh is in fact one of her students one of her seniors i think the age gap is like he's maybe 18 and she's like 22 or 23 so it is a smaller age gap but obviously still very forbidden with her being his teacher and yeah so toxic like the two of them are so bad for each other but yet they can't stay away from each other I, I I love this one, love this one. And I don't know if I've talked about it in a student teacher video, which is why I need to go back and see when my last student teacher video was, because I honestly don't know if I've talked about either of these two with that trope before. And I just finished last night a student teacher book. So I might be close to having enough new ones. Okay, that's all the ones that I'm gonna do today. I don't even know how long this video got. <sighs> Once again, every single time I sit down, I'm like, I'm gonna be concise. When am I ever concise? Never. So anyways, I'm gonna do a part three. So if I still have not done your little prompt yet, I'm so sorry, but like I said, I will, I'm, I, we gotta do a part three. And if you have any more that you would like, any more like niche ones, you know, please let me know. But otherwise, that is it for today's video. I'm gonna have my wrap up up, I think on Tuesday next week. It might be a little late because of it being the holiday weekend. I kind of don't wanna have to do any work on the holiday weekend. So it might be up a little late on Tuesday or maybe even Wednesday, but it'll get up next week. So anyways, that is it for today's video and I will see you when I see ya.